So today we'll be just looking into how we can use Swagger and Open API. Okay. So first of all, uh, what is Open API that we need to know? So Open API uh, is basically a specification uh, for describing or documenting about a particular REST APIs. Now. This open API generally people write in a either JSON format or YML format, but it is totally language independent. So you may create a uh, REST API in Python, Go, PHP, Java, Kotlin, .NET Core, whatever language, but you can always describe that using open API or Swagger. So it's a language and implementation agnostic. And this open API we can use as the consumer, that means the service or other client who are consuming this API, they can use the open API to understand what are the different operations being supported, what is the request response object, if that open API endpoints are secure or not, and how to interact with that particular API without knowing the actual implementation detail. So it's a specification based on which we define documentation of any REST API. So why the API required the specification or documentation? So you know, any API that you create, right? The API is need to be consumed by other tools, be it a language, another language consumer, or be it a tool like Postman. So this API is basically help you also to create the calling code. Instead of you writing the REST API using REST template or web client in a Spring environment or HTTP IO or HTTP OK libraries, you can auto-generate from here the calling code and you can auto-generate in different languages also. And you can build your implementation logic on the server side, on the API side, based on this documentation also in different languages. So the code auto generation also can be workable with Open API. There are certain tools how we can write the Open API. Either we can write the Open API using Swagger Editor. It's an online tool which support the Open API specification 2x and 3x, but it doesn't support 3.1x. Okay, and they basically support this in a YML format. And from the Swagger editor itself, you can auto generate the code both for implementation and the consumer side in a different supporting languages. So first, there are two approaches: the specification or documentation first approach, or you can annotate code first approach. So first you can define the open API specification or you can choose a open API library to be added into your code base and you annotate those. We most probably have seen or used this annotation to generate that particular documentation. So let's see the example of a Maven project. So first to start with this Maven project, we have like form.xml. This is like a Spring Boot application. Now here, you have to add this dependency. That is Spring Doc, Spring dot Open API dot UI with the particular version. That help you to create the port first approach of generating the annotation. So this is basically a to-do list kind of application, basic card operation, okay? And we're going to see different annotation of which we write this documentation. So if I run my application, I will find
the open API will be available in localhost 8080 swagger UI index.html. That we all know. So there you have the detailed specification and also the JSON format of this documentation or the schema is defined out here. Here they are using open API specification 3.0.1. Now, so what is the specification we're currently looking? It's very simple. It has gate, put, delete, gate and post, normal, your card operation, and it uses a model, which is basically a 2D. And this has been all been generated using annotations. Now, out here, we can see this open API specification has been created, right? So now let me let's try to open Swagger URL. Or we can open up the Swagger editor. Editor.swagger.org. So here you can see the open API specification that has been loaded out here is in YML format. Okay. So let me save this particular specification as a JSON. API docs.json and I will try to load this out here, see if I'm able to import the file. So API docs.json. Okay. As I load the particular file, it automatically converts from JSON to our YML format. So if you can try to understand what are the different sections this uh, open API specification has. So here we can see the similar kind of a structure or we can try our their new editor also. And we try to load up that. Okay. So here we can, you know, import the same file out here. And here it has been supporting also the JSON format. Okay. Now, here you can, as I mentioned, like you can generate both the server-side implementation code as well you can generate the client-side implementation code. So code generation is automatically being supported. So here you can, you know, and I can also save this file as a JSON also, uh, from JSON to YML. Okay. So if I save that, and I try to load this particular file, then it will be like open API 03 YML. Okay. Now again, guys, see the YML format. Okay. Here you're going to have the same kind of a structure that you see into my swagger. In so, for example, if you are presenting or uh, so basically the power of this open API is that that you can easily create this particular documentation without having an actual implementation. You can define your OML file and you can demonstrate using swagger editor and you can show the other team or share this particular document with the other team. So they can also view this as well. Okay. So out here, let's see what are the different part of the open APIs are there. So let's understand the four main parts, main section of the open API specification. So first and foremost, there is paths tag info, servers, and there are components, under component, there are schema. So what is a schema? Schema is about specifying your object that is there, okay? So here it is basically saying that in a schema, I have the schema object name, to do item. What type of it is? It is a type of objects. Then within that, I have like an item ID. That type is a string. Then I have like a title. That type is string also, description. 
that also is stream and then I have right, completed that also is type that is boolean. Okay. So here you can have object within that other object and other object if you want to. So next part that is there is the different routing paths. Okay. So like here we can see these are the two main routing paths are there. So, but you're going to say, okay, I have so many endpoints. Why it is showing too many two only two routing paths? Because out here, if you can see, there is only two unique routing paths are there. One is to do slash to do item ID, and then only to do. So here we are not seeing the gate and post. Here we are seeing the unique path. And under unique path, like to do have a gate as well as a post. So it can get the list of objects. It can also get the post view object. Okay, so that's what you can see that under to do, there is gate and there is post. Two operations being supported. And gate and post, again, you can have that tag. Like if you want to group those APIs, right? You generally put the tag. If you use the same tag, then it becomes under group of the same APIs, right? So here you have tag. That is to do API operation. Which operation we are supporting? This is the operation name, is mostly the method name that we auto generated. That is get all to do items. What kind of parameter it do support, right? So here, if you can see, here they have we're going to see the searching operation based on Boolean value, right? True or false. Here we can see it out here we have to say try it out and we can put two and false similarly out here we have to put try on and then we can see two and false then i can execute this okay and if there is any record that will be show up out here okay now what is the parameter it's taking is complete it is an inquiry so in where this particular parameter is is a part of the query so it's a query stream whether it is required yes it is required what is the schema type look like it's a boolean okay then you can provide the response now responses can be your successful response or you can also share like 404 500 403 401 those kind of a response so here the real responses comes by the status code then you say describe we can put your own description that this is like a list of ID, a list of to-do type. And here you have the content type. You can put application JSON. And the schema type is a, out here is an object. Okay. Similarly, we have a, like a post endpoint. Right. So in the post endpoint, what is going to happen is that you're going to have the different fields, right? Whatever the fields are, etc. you can put out here. And your body's application or JSON, whatever value put, it will come out here. And you can post it. So it has some parameters that are in the path or some cookie, right, or header or query, right? So some parameters going in the path, some parameters going like this. So if we now look into the post, so in the post we have item two, operation, create to do item, request body, contain application JSON schema. And when you have a schema, we don't have to define the schema again. We can say the schema is already present under component hash component under schema under to do it and it is required is true and then you have the different responses out here okay so when you are posting this you can also define the schema that will be used okay and then the responses you can say what is the contain type and etc you can put 
get and post. Then similarly, you have here certain gate. And here you have the parameters within the path. So you are looking for a single object. And you are saying this is the scheme. And you can also here using the ref as well. So in case of a put, so here we are using seeing another tag. So if there is like a different tag, the same endpoint will be listed under a different tags altogether. Okay. So like here you can see this is put under different tag. Okay. So here you have the post and here in a different tag. So part of the both tag. And here you can put the description, summary, etc. Those will be coming out here. So here you have the description out here and you have the summary that we can see. External documentation, if you wanted to describe for more information, click here. That you can also put additional documentation. Operation, you give your operation name, parameter. It's an item ID, which is in the path. It's a path variable. It is required. It is a stream. An example value, you can also say. Another one is a basically in, but it need to become as a part of the cookie. Okay, required forms, you can send the cookie or not. From host, which host this is, it goes in a preview. You have each client that goes in the query. So in the same example, you see the path, cookie, query, and header, you can pass along the data. And in the request body, you can put a description, and you can also point to the previous schema that you defined on the component schemas. Okay, then under responses, you can have the response that has been written, and there is some example success one, success two, etc. Similarly, your delete operations is there, which is taking a path and it's going to be returning an object. So, this how what is the particular different paths and tags are now in case of tags, basically used to group your. Schema items or uh, operation item. Here is your tag details. Now you can also mention the service URL. So say it is production, it is day, QA, those service endpoints you can also paste endpoint. You can also mention. So user can not only use the same endpoint, but it can also use the other endpoint that is there. And info is about what is this? This to do item, the version ID, and it is like the open page specification three okay that is there okay so this is what is the in generated product right now let's see what are the different annotation i can use so first of all what i'm going to do i'm going to choose the latest version of spring dot what is spring dot spring dot open api ui that version i will take next what i'm going to do into my application I say open API definition. So here I'm passing all the info definition, right? All my info definitions are here. Okay. Similarly, my server information are there, and my tags and their description will coming out here. It's an open API definition. So that means it will generate everything that I see out here. My tags, my servers, my to-do versions. Any kind of other details are coming out here. Info, server, and tags. That thing will be populated from this annotation. Next, create to do. Here, if you don't provide anything, only thing we have provided out here is the swagger operation. What is doing? It's doing to do, right? Only the tags are mentioned, and the method name will be taken up from the method name that is there. And the request object will obviously can create. Similarly, the operations only having tag out here, nothing path variable etc. is automatically going to pick up and get all to do item again. The operation, rest of the items we can also mention, but in terms of them be created, we can have additional annotation, but it's a generic annotation. Rest of the all of the, these things are by default get created. 
similarly out here. So path variable, it's automatically picked up. In case of an update, now update showing elaborative things, right? So right now here, what we've seen, we have seen the request header, request paradigm, cookie value, request body, and path variable. So all those annotations will be picked up by default. Whatever you mention as a required, those things will come up out here as a required. Now, if you wanted to put additional information on this, so you can put, say, which tags this is in, what is the operation, if you wanted to use a different operation, like here the method name is update to do item, so update to do, you give a different information. Service description, so previously you have seen only tags, now service operation description is there. Now, request body, request body, you can mention, that is like a different request body. This is a description. This is the country. This is a schema. To do item dot class. Parameters. To do item ID. This is the path variable. An example is this. In parameter in is path. What are the different parameter types are being supported? As you have seen, it support path, cookie, query, header, and by default. Similarly, external documentation, you can link to other documentation. Responses, similarly, you can say, okay, this is the response status code. Now, here only one API response status code has been mentioned, but you can mention multiple response status code. Here you can give a, like a example object also, like how the response will come on different scenarios. And the schema is a to-do class. Media type, you also have mentioned application JSON dot value. So using the operation and the API annotation, you can create code first annotations. That is there. Now, out here, uh, let's see how we can you know, generate server-side code or client-side code. Say so client-side, I have the same code, right? I have only the specification. I don't know anything apart from this, right? Now, if I wanted to create a Java client out of that, so I can create that. So this is like Java client being automatically created. Okay. This is itself is a project. Okay. So let me try to load that particular project. It is under desktop. Okay, and then we choose Java client generated. We choose as a Maven project, we trust the project, and let me open up a new window. So here we don't have to write anything, it's automatically get generated. So let's see what is automatically get generated. And this is like a uh, Gradle project that is currently there. So out here is also has a Gradle, also has a Maven. So you can choose. So here it has license retail, etc., developer name, etc. Then you have uh, build plugin, dependency plugin, Apache Maven plugin. Code house, module, etc. Different plugins are there. That's okay. And then there is different profiles, etc. Now comes the dependency part. The dependency part is taking up the Spring Core version 3 dependency. So, sorry, Swagger Core version 3 dependency. Okay. It uses as a client OK HTTP for making the calls. Okay. And it also has a logging interceptor. It using JSON, JSON Fire, TMTB versions, and JMIT. So those are the basically dependency. You can change the dependency if you want to. Now let's see what is the source code that being generated out here. Okay. So out here, you have the API. So based on the tax, the API has been created. So if you wanted to get an API client, you can call the API client, and you can then make a call to that. 
So you can use the OK HTTP to make generic truck work. So there you don't have to write any single line of code. You can directly use this code and use in your project. API key authentication model, to-do item model that we have mentioned in the specification. That has been checked in and it is automatically generated. So you should not be making any changes. So here you have the API client. You can use the API client. It has a server ID, etc date format, etc. So you can create an API client, which is internally going to be using OK HTTP client. And then it's going to let you call those particular endpoints. Similarly, you have API extensions, API responses, configuration, everything. You don't have to do anything. Now you can simply use the API endpoint. And then on the API endpoint, you can make the, all the calls that are there. So you can get the XPP client. You have the dependent, like is verify SSL, et cetera, are there. Now, Based on the API endpoint, I have the authentication also been mentioned. And here by okay, all those. In point if you want to Either make the both synchronous as well as asynchronous call. Okay, so this API endpoint is there. So now if I wanted to call this one, so what I have to so I have to just use this particular class into my project. This class I'm going to pass an API client. Okay. I just create API client, and after I get the API client, I can be able to make the create item call or whatever the you know the method call is there that I can call it. Create to do list, etc. There. So that's about it. Any question you guys have? Sir, with this, which function calls are we going to make? It is whatever is defined within that Swagger endpoint, right? So, for example, in the Swagger endpoint, we have the operation name. Okay. So, this operation name, based on this operation name, when you generate the code, you're most probably going to have in. So here you have to do ID call that is present. So you can make a call to it. And here is your call that is there. You just pass the to do ID. It takes care of everything that is there. Okay. So this way you can, whatever operation name you are given, so automatically this code is being generated. And you can also auto-generate these codes using your Maven or Gadel plugin as well. Okay. To generate them separately. For Java. for Java and any other language. For specifically for Java, Kotlin, etc. And other languages have their code generator as well. Okay. Any other so operations means function here, right? Operation means the API functions. Okay. Okay. 
Any other question, guys? No, right? Now, okay. Now the next session, what you're going to look into? Okay, you create a different API endpoints, right? How are you going to be doing the testing? Now, different API endpoints only call each other, correct? Now, there should be some mechanism for validating this, right? Kind of like okay, integration tests that I can do. So that thing being supported by a separate tool that we can discuss next session. So now we are clear about how to design the Swagger endpoint. We can use annotation or we can write the Swagger there and then automatically it will have the plugins that are there to generate the Swagger endpoint as well as the implementation classes. So in your server side, you, have, you can generate the similar implementation classes. They will be created as an interface and then you can extend them and you can provide their own implementation so let us quickly see that we have so far generated client side codes let's generate a server side code when you choose a server side code there are different options are there right so for example if you wanted to create with java java provide different option for example any kind of rest api in JaxRS, you can use different libraries like Jersey, REST easy, okay, a normal JAXR specification, or you can create a Kotlin server, or you can create also a Micronaut server, or you can create a Spring server, right, or Scala, Akka, HTTP server, or Node.js server. Okay, so let's see if I wanted to create a Micronaut one. Is it like a mom fine? So this is like a server side code. So we have seen the client side code. Now let's open up the and see the server side code. So this is on a Java application. So now here you have a to-do API. Like I mentioned, this will be an interface. Okay. And it's going to have all the operation, annotation, post method, etc. So depending on your uh, swagger annotations will by default be generated, right? And then addition to your server, right? Or server framework they're going to be adding additional annotation. For example, here the controller is not a spring controller, rather a micronaut controller that is there. Like here you have the HTTP annotation micronaut, and then you have like path. But then again, these are the interface only. And they have by default unsupported exception being thrown. So if you wanted to implement that, what you have to do, we have to extend that particular interfaces and then you can provide that particular mapping and those path. So based on which you can create your server side code. Similarly, you will find you're having like a to-do model. Okay. That being automatically generated, it been annotated with the Jackson annotation, right? Also Micronaut validation that is there constraints. And it's also annotated with the schema. Now, 
And the main application is the open API definition, whatever you mentioned on the tag title description that is automatically added. Okay, you can modify them. So this is your Myconaut example that been created. Okay, and here you have the Myconaut inject validation, other libraries, runtime annotation, this would be client, it's to be server entry, logback classic, Jackson, JMIT, all of the things are directly being imported. Now we generate both the server side as well client side port using Swagger as a first artifact that we create for our project. So not only Java, you can create in other language like Python, Scala, Kotlin, Go, okay, or even TypeScript. That means so. Any other questions? Can we uh, generate the YML file from this code, from the given code, or we have to handwrite it? No, no. Uh, we have created that from the given code, right? So first of all, from the code itself, what it done is that out here you have the API documentation that is provided out here, API documentation, right? So this is like a, in a JSON format. So what I do, I open up this same JSON file out here and I converted and saved it in a YML format also. Yes, but this one we have to handwrite it. No. No, no, we, we don't have to handwrite. Handwrite. no no we don't have to because here we have started with our application code first approach where you use this one right this annotation in your spring right yeah, and okay. you annotate it and it creates that. You don't even need to handwrite it. You can use this same editor out here, Swagger editor, to create your specification. Okay, it provides you validation options, and you can also see the rendered Swagger out UI outcome as well out here. And here you can also generate the client and server. But this is more or less like your. You can save it as a JSON. You can save it as a YML. Okay. You can also import any URL or you can import even a file. Both are with support. Okay. So all you need to know is about the specification we can start with, or in case of a spring, we can start with with that notation. In case of a micronaut, if we put the particular library it automatically creates the documentation there you don't have to put the annotation but if you want you can also choose to put the annotation so annotation library is same for both of the cases be it Myconaut, be it java it will be same so here we have the Myconaut server generated code right And here the code is already generated. So there you have this dependency you have to include Swagger core version 3, which has Swagger annotation. So all the annotation you require to create a code first approach to annotate your REST APIs with this annotation. And it will by default show you the render outcome of the API docs as well as regular outcome of the particular Swagger E1. So that means by default is supported out of the box. Okay. Any other question?
we don't have any question, we can close now and we can have like a follow-up session on this. And we know that if we have this, we can use the both the postman to test that APIs, right? Yes. Okay. So similarly, there is another tool similar to the postman is the insomnia. It's just basically a strict code that you can use to test out the APIs as well. With postman, you can also write the unit test cases and integrate it with uh, means uh, acceptance test or specific test you can write. And then test can be also executed by Jenkins on any particular build pipeline. Hmm. Oh. Okay then, fine. If you have no more questions, we can close the session now. Like Thank you, boss.